I'm Rosa Hui, the director of Bristol and Even Chinese Women's Group. I was born in China, Guinin in China. My father had branches of his business all over China. I was only about two, two and a half. We actually moved to Hong Kong. We were, we were actually tipped off the communists marching down from the north and we were told to get out of the country. I was brought up there, but the UK is the probably where I reside longer than anywhere else. Hong Kong was a very affluent city. Everybody works hard. It's no such thing as nine to five. You literally work to withdraw. And Hong Kong give anybody a chance who's not afraid of working hard. You can be a pauper when you arrive in Hong Kong, then 10 years time, you can become a millionaire. We end up with rubber manufacturing company. We import rubber gums from uh, Malaysia and turn them into night wellies, or trainers and flip-flops. I used to go around my father to visit clients because my father couldn't speak English. And little did I know at the time, I was being used as interpreter. Perhaps from very young, I acquired the skill of trading business without knowing it. It must be about 1964, I arrived in the UK. To start with, I really, really hated it. I was crying every day for the first six months I wanted to go home. Sunday is like a ghost town. You don't see anyone. In Hong Kong, Sundays, everybody's out and about. I came over here to actually to pursue my studying. You know, trained to be a nurse. I was offered a contract by St. Open Hospital. I realized when I was in the hospital, the sight of blood, it was enough to make my ankle, you know, wobbly. And I decided, no, that's not me. So I had to change your career. But I was not content with just being shorthand typist or secretary. So I went to study business. People at the time were very suspicious of foreigners and they're quite hostile. They, they are not rude to you, but they sort of keep their distance a bit. I'm not a sore person waiting for something to happen to me on a silver plate. And I reach out to make friends and gradually that helped me to settle in this country a bit. 1985 to 89. I was at the time a very, very successful international China trade consultant because I just set up the Southwest China Trade Center and we registered the company and the Chinese government going to be our partners uh, in that project until the Tiananmen Square. Just a few days before then, I was due to take a delegation, including a member from the Department of Trade and in Industry, and three officers from the local government, and also one from the Task Force or Home Office uh, promoting trade. And we were just about to fly out to China. We were just about to take off, and then we had a phone call from the Foreign Office. You will be right in the middle of that unrest in Beijing. So, hold your horses. You will have to wait until you calm down because you are representing the government. I think that was the longest postponement of my life, you know. After that, the local government said, we don't wish to trade with a regime which hasn't got human rights. We're talking about June 1989. And I was asked, by four young women to help out to sell a Chinese women's group. Before then, we did have a Chinese association, but that was established purely for the issue of business people and very male dominated. I said, well, I, I'm sorry, I knew nothing about social work. I never been working in the community. I can't. I kept saying no and no. They were offer me 4,700 a year as a salary working 17 and a half hours per week. When I was working as a trade consultant, I was bringing home 5,000 pounds in two months. <laughs> Finally, they shared me about, Rosa, you're very influential, you know a lot of things. You know all the politicians and 
and also a large company, and you can help Chinese women so much. And I sat them down, and I just said, look, all right, I'll give you three months of my time. You can't afford to pay me. I think it's the kind of person I am. I don't like defeat. And once I promised, I delivered. And I think that was the longest three months of my life. That's supposed to be 17 and a half, but I was already doing 30 hours a week, working on Sundays as well. And even County Council decided to also chip in with the funding. That was after two years. So that's, that was the beginning of Bristol Navy Chinese Women's Group. Twelve years ago, we actually established the carer service. We provide respite care for Chinese carers who worked 24-7, help them to assess mainstream uh, services. We also provide um, creative activities for the local community, especially women, and so we help them to make sure they are actually not a victim of domestic violence. We help them to learn English as well, or even use tape recorders for a lot of elderly. They can't even read or write in their own language. I was asked to go and see a Chinese elder who was trying to kill herself uh, in Sami Hospital. And when the nurses want to take her clothes off for her to have a shower or a bath, she screened her hair off. It turned out to be when I went in, I talked to her. She wasn't being dirty. It turned out to be all her jewelry, all her money has been taken away from her by her own family with the Chinese elders very often sew a little inside pocket in the trousers and she got her last 80 pounds. She hid in there. She was afraid people wouldn't take that away from her. When I left, she gave me the 80 pounds. She wants me to have it from her. And I said, no. I said, I'll put it away in the safe for you. And I was so touched. I think that was my award. And to me, that is people I help. To me, it's more important than anything else. And people destitute because they have the language, the cultural differences, they suffer. They couldn't even ask for a tablet. When they had a headache in the hospital, um, I felt like I gave something back to people who value me. Our services extend as far as the Western Supermare, Bath, the South Gloucestershire area. Now I pass on all my skills onto my younger generation staff. Majority of my staff they start as volunteer in my group. Chinese New Year is the largest festival in our Chinese calendar. Once a year we had a big gathering and chase away all the evil bad luck of that previous year, then welcome the new year with a big bang. We are very, very proud nation, actually. And the conception from the service provider make Chinese invisible, as though we don't need any government support or help, which is not true. In the Western world, you have to be open. Asking for help is a weakness. Weakness is a shameful thing. So in a way, that's the clash between the East and West culture. I'm still very westernized to some of the older Chinese, you know, because I'm very outspoken, which is unusual for Chinese women, definitely. It took me five years to win the confidence and trust of my own community. Um, that is proven to be the largest challenge of my life. But once I have won their trust, then you can't get rid of any one of them. And that was a, normally it's a joke. They say, oh, anybody who even injured their big toe, the first person they'll contact is Rosa. I think that tells you a lot. <laughs>